possessed by demonic forces. On a deeper level, demonic spirits often play characters in scenes of dreams, to form control of the thought process. While intervening in dreams they create false narratives, which form illusions for the physical realm and can make you imagine a reason to feel bitterness, disconnect, envy, or strife once you are awakened. The demonic spirits will make you think excessively about the past events, and pretend to prevent reoccurring events from happening, all while forcing extreme current dramatic events to happen. They only want you to acknowledge their participation when they are trying to get you to commit those dehumanizing acts. So, they often criticize and judge you, instigating the past circumstances and events upon every impulse. But most times you were defenseless and weak throughout the evil acts. They influence your daily affairs of the heart, your feelings toward certain people, in which they rather for you to take actions against them. If they aren't criticizing or judging acts that were committed, they reject how things were done when it doesn't affect anyone or anything, but most times they rather it did. They may even use normal words like humans, but it translates differently in the spirit world. If you constantly commit dehumanizing acts and decide to dehumanize others on a deeper level, they will continually bribe and flatter you to escalate and intensify criminal acts against others while attacking your character throughout the warfare. Any acts of unrighteousness are satisfying to them as long as it dramatically ruins lives, and everything they try to get you to do is current and ongoing. Once you acknowledge the illusions are lies, and all fakery is just to determine how weak you are currently, they still be wanting to know whether or not you will play along with the lies. They will have you gluttony when you have already eaten enough food, or not wanting to ever eat at all. Ultimately all this is so they can feel justified manipulating as a genius to be idolized and worshipped. And after enduring mass manipulation against the soul through dramatic circumstances and events, most people become willing to cross the lines of decency. Unfortunately, it is virtually impossible to prevent reoccurring afflictions while under defilement. But eventually, the things you have done will turn into repeats and then excessiveness. The excessiveness will later turn into obsessiveness, habits you can't control. All this can turn into a bitter feud of warfare with the demonic spirits, with them trying to control the spirit world. The attacks can have you feeling some kind of way, wanting to seek revenge against the evil spirits in the physical realm due to not being able to in the past. However, this is someone you knew very well, who participated or was responsible for things that went wrong. A circumstance or event involving, an abuser or molester in which, abuse, cognitive distortion, destruction, despair, isolation, rejection, restricted expression, or violence took place. The seducing spirit mentality can make any spirit appear evil. They can be family, friends, neighbors, stepfamily, or strangers, some may even be adopted or ancestral spirits. Either way, they dehumanize victims through sinful family traditions that are unbearable to live by, and they demonize and torment to commit those sinful acts against you or others. When they intervene in affairs of matters dear to the heart, it can lower self-esteem. Once the fear of uncertainty takes place, you will possibly acknowledge setbacks as incapable of being overcome, which can lead to broken bonds of communication. The negative energy of evil spirits is at its highest point during the failure moments. Because they marvel at the failure of the people they demonize. The positive energy of the angel and godly spirits remain low steadily throughout successes, until the celebration points. But once positive energy rises to higher points, the evil spirits feed off that energy too. They don't expect you to make a conscious decision that will get you ahead in life. In church communities, we are often told to think of what Jesus would do in the situation and how he would handle it. He would cast the demonic spirits out which relates to a departure. Truthfully, casting out evil spirits doesn't necessarily work and may result in further damages. But obviously, you still need to reverse the demon dwelling otherwise they won't acknowledge you are taking back control. Nowadays reprogramming the mind to change the false discernment is likely the only departure that can take place, along with purification. You don't have to continually let demons dominate, once you are aware that the result leads to modeling those characters in your daily life which can lead to criminal warfare. Take action, you can learn from your and others' mistakes, it is up to us to change the cycles of abuse and vainness. Demonic Dreams Dreams are keys to unlocking the inner spiritual world. If you awake without remembering your dream for the day or don't include God in your daily affair of matters, you remain in bondage to fear of demonic spirits attacks. Dreams may not have anything to do with civilization physically, they can help to become more civilized with effective usage of the sixth sense approach. During sleep paralysis, you wake up immobile sensing a spirit figure in your head lurking upon every impulse, and you are convinced this demonic force is holding you down. When sleep you are impaired and unable to act out dreams, but the events of dreams have you waking up during the paralysis. It is the power of suggestion as well as fear. When you become afraid, blood flows from the fingertips of major muscles of the body. As you get ready to be asked to do something, maybe even criticized or judged by demonic spirits. You become hypervigilant, so you start noticing actions, movements, or voices of the disembodied spirits. Probably you wouldn't have noticed them before, 
and start assuming this will go wrong if you don't take responsible actions by dismissing, ejecting, or rejecting their false and negative notions. Remain calm and don't let them distort your purest intentions of true discernment while utilizing the sixth sense. Listen, determine, and evaluate events movement of dreams to acknowledge having a clearer significant approach in your daily life. Avoid affliction, bondage, calamity, confusion, distortion, frustration, and failure while listening. Since most demonic spirits evolve from past events of demonization for victims. Most dreams will be intense breaking through cycles of the abusive nature all while under the attack of beliefs, faith, and values. Try to visualize God's presence while listening, and acknowledge becoming a godly person also includes suffering for Christ's sake. He wouldn't want you to become habitual towards affliction or suffering, but he would rather you become wise while learning from mistakes. In general, he would rather you acknowledge the consequences of the choices you make. Also, keep in mind God orders the steps of people who are justified through his name. Most importantly remember to embody a loving and kind spirit daily, to avoid confusion or mood swings of demonic spirits intervening. This will enable retaining thoughts of true discernment of dreams rather than, false discernment of dreams demons play roles that lead to evilness. Avoid casting out with fire it won't turn out favorably, it may escalate pretending a need for their dominance, making you believe in being defenseless, vulnerable, or weak. Remember negative energy is at its highest during failure moments. And positive energy remains low steadily through successes, until celebration points. Avoid giving demonic spirits the high energy of self-righteousness, that they think best works to their advantage. All this will make the demon spirits feel like fools rather than, geniuses for showing up in them. Demonic spirits rather you are unconscious of using your sixth sense. But you must control and dominate the usage of the sixth sense wisely. With the subconscious having the ability to connect with infinity, space, time, and quantity. The soul emerges with godliness, spirituality, and ungodliness. Sleep Paralysis Cases of sleep paralysis are the root cause of severe physical mobility, in immoral psychological, and spiritual levels. This happens when a person is going into or coming out of a sleep state, and it can last a few minutes or hours at a time. Generally, the ghost decides the duration, etc., according to their spiritual strength. And you may experience a choking sensation accompanied by breathing difficulties, or feelings of being pressured. Often you may even experience a sexual assault or molestation, and this is likely to happen while sleeping supine position. Other times a foul aroma may be perceived. When one is lying on either side, one of the two main spiritual energy systems is active. The spiritual energy flowing to various organs and systems of the body is vital to their functioning. As the flow of energy is reduced, it is easier to immobilize the motor system of a person. And it is for this reason that 70% of all cases of sleep paralysis happens while lying on the back. All of which can be very embarrassing and mentally draining. A growing phenomenon that happens to adults, but it happens 30% more to young adults. Worldly possessions are the highest among young adults, they become targets for ghosts to possess to fulfill their desires. Someone who hasn't experienced worldly possessions can too become a target if they are likely to experience worldly possessions on a greater scale of life than the current. This can be an immature middle or older age adult. Spiritual science researchers say those undergoing severe stress are reliving past horrors through sleep paralysis. And basically, you are hallucinating ache and dreaming. When trying to remember what happened in the past, you tend to forget things are significant in the here and now. This can hinder the scope of the vision for setting future goals. Rapid eye movement activates the conscious part of the brain, to monitor danger and threats. That can hinder going to sleep and activate feelings of bitterness, disconnect, envy, or strife in the immediate surroundings. And if you continually drink the water due to breathing difficulties, this can activate the bladder to constantly going to the bathroom. Disruptions between sleep can be the result of nighttime eating, sleepwalking, or other various temporary justifications. Before you realize it the night is over and it is time to start the day. Having said that, sleep paralysis can be overcome by harnessing divine energy. In turn that increases spiritual strength, and the ability to combat nighttime negative energy and reduce the duration of the paralysis. Quality of sleep daily can better physical mobility and awareness of moral psychological or spiritual levels. SSRs also say, sleep paralysis has revealed one of the main spiritual reasons for this phenomenon is the attack by ghosts, demons or devils are considered negative energy. However, the ability to perceive the presence of such negative energies is done using the sixth sense. Two SSRs say, the frequency of an attack of sleep paralysis happens 10% during the waking state and 90% during deep sleep. Only 30% of people are aware of the occurrences whereas 70% of people are unaware it has even happened to them. The research was taken on seekers and non-seekers of God. But it does include all cases of sleep paralysis, whether frequent or once-in-a-lifetime incidents. A seeker is a person who makes honest and sincere efforts daily to grow spiritually. His or her spiritual practice intuitively conforms to the six basic principles of spiritual practice. When desiring spiritual growth, 
a seeker regularly improves their spiritual practice immensely, and a non-seeker does neither of either. Evil spirits admire negative energy, this means they have full control over your thought process, which makes them dance and sing in harmony. When you take away their control and it seems a light bulb blew out. Once the light goes out you can have a strong foundation surrounded by God. Causes of Genetic link Life stress Long-term disturbances of those who have been sexually abused Sleep deprivation Attack or possess for major reasons Seeking revenge To gain pleasure from troubling others To torment seekers of God Trying to satisfy their desires or cravings Symptoms Waking up in the middle of the night and can't move, completely immobilized Sensing a seen or an unseen presence hovering upon them or in the room Which feels like an unnerving grip of fear Jesus said in Luke 11 26 When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none, he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. In most cases, the demonic spirits don't change. Although the church Jesus established doesn't support demonic spirit activities, his ministry is losing a lot of souls. Because the world's ways of dealing with demonic dwellings impose defenseless, vulnerable, and weak ways upon people who suffer. Leading many people to not admit faults or evil acts of violence. Most churches today support demonic spirits activities are cults, and cults known as a new religious movement do what isn't possible to do in Jesus' ministry. A victim of demonic spirits in a cult, may not be asked to acknowledge and accept accountability for their actions of retaliation. While all these ways are the reasons demonic spirits dwell, you are to forgive the enemy as many times necessary. Most importantly, if you can control demonic spirits you don't become demonized. As a believer and witness of Jesus, you stand steadfast for God's sake. You fight spiritual warfare standing firm against the demonic spirits using biblical knowledge, faith, and prayer through the grace of God. Ephesians 6 1418, the emotions of broken bonds through demons invading our anxiety, confusion, doubt, fear, hopelessness, lack of determination, enthusiasm, and motivation all of which can affect anyone, anywhere, and anytime. Sure, medication won't necessarily enable the departure of demonic spirits, it may even escalate and allow more to enter. Resulting in bipolar or PSD disorders which are much worse than depression. Not only that, but the evil spirits also would rather not see you claim the victory of overcoming. Once a person has no faith in the reward of good or punishment of evil, there is no reason to be human. They become willing only to express the evil they have in the heart. However, not too many people acknowledge proper usage of cognitive functions, universal laws, or etheric principles, neither do very many people utilize the sixth sense effectively. Be real with yourself and then you can be real with others. Demonic spirits are comparable to Ahab, and his wife Jezebel in the book of Kings, both were wicked. Ahab was a king of Israel, he first appeared in the biblical timeline about 932 BC, he conquered a lot of lands, and he did more evil things in God's eyes than any other king before him. He allowed Jezebel to kill godly priests and a godly man named Naboth. He also created problems for the prophet Elijah while he was alive. Jezebel incited her husband, King Ahab, to abandon the worship of Yahweh, and then encouraged the worship of deities Baal and Asherah. As known, the Jezebel spirit cannot operate without the Ahab spirit. In Revelation 2.18 Jesus tried to warn us of these types of people. According to the Dead Sea Scrolls, the book of Revelations Jezebel was Helena, Mary Magdalene's mother, she was Simon Magus' mistress during the Gospel timeline, in which he rescued her from prostitution. Simon was also known as a magician because he performed magical tricks and adopted the identities of others, as Simon the Zealot he was crucified with Jesus, and as Lazarus, he was so-called raised from the dead. In which, Jesus supported Simon instead of raising him, and Jesus opened himself to charges of the Zealot by supporting him. Simon was the leader of a Gnostic sect, teaching he was an incarnation of God, and his mistress, Helena was an incarnation of the thought of God. She was the Samaritan woman with whom Jesus conversed, Sapphira, Martha, the menstruous woman, the Syrophoenician woman, the woman clothed in scarlet and purple, Jezebel, Salome, Joanna, and Jesus' mother's sister. Christians objected to her because the form of doctrine taught by Simon and her was a serious threat to their mission, and she claimed priesthood on her own. To be clothed in scarlet and purple meant she claimed both cardinal and bishop rights. While Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene he had come to resent Helena because using her seductive role as Salome, she persuaded Herod Antipas to behead John the Baptist, she wanted the papacy to be given to Simon. Since Jesus was associated with them he was under pressure to disassociate himself from the group. Even though Antipas wasn't the killer, after John's death, Simon became Pope and used some of John's titles including John II and the Voice. To his enemy Simon was another like Satan, 
and he was called Beelzebul, a greater name for demonic power. Jezebel builds her cult through sex and violence, instead of earning her way to the top because she feels entitled. She is known to paint her face before defeat, and although the original Jezebel didn't use her sex appeal to advance her goals, the modern day Jezebel does. The original Jezebel wasn't a whore, but an enabler of whoring. Another popular theme on Jezebel is allegations against men who abuse or sexually harass women. Jezebel is said to have eunuchs, false prophets, helpers, messengers, and slaves. The true prophets stand against her false prophets to save the kingdom. John of Patmos believed she was an evil type haunting church until the end of the world. A long-standing war has been going on since the beginning of time between God's people and the Canaanites' descendants, and now this war includes Jezebel's children. Both families' descendants are presumably the most corrupt generation since Noah built the ark, and God demands his people to wipe these people out entirely. The modern-day Jezebel is associated with promiscuous men and women, in which women who are given masculine names or embraces masculinity seduce others. Distorting character is the main driving force behind the modern-day Jezebel spirit. It constantly manipulates the gender of a male's character to distort his masculinity, and a female's character to distort her femininity. Eventually, the person doesn't acknowledge whether he or she is male or female. Of which defile a person's entire character, such as identity, integrity, personality, and personal freedom and growth. Sure, this is the force of powerful demonic spirits used to instigate certain situations since it feeds off confrontation immensely. The demonic spirit may either influence a person to groom children for sex or molest them. Broken Spirits of Individuality Sally was born in Mississippi where she grew up as a slave, in her 20s during the 1930s, the family moved to Little Rock, Arkansas, where she endured other forms of slavery. There she worked as a housekeeper and picked cotton. Sally had 14 kids, a few of her kids are Mary and Valerie. She has had numerous husbands, and most of her children have different fathers. Over the years, sadly, she and her former husbands had physically, sexually, and verbally abused her kids also, there were incest relations. However, the slavery influence that she and her family experienced formed into anger, aggression, depression, instigation, and inferiority and superiority complexes. Their friends were intimidated by them and everyone else around. Sally often cooked pig, ears, feet, intestines, etc., which made the family weak by only being able to afford those cuts of meats. During the late 1960s, she moved the family to Redbird, Oklahoma, to get a new lease on life. Sally and her family continued to experience many forms of slavery, by then most of them had become adults. She eventually stopped picking cotton, kept housekeeping, and started selling illicit drugs. In the mid-1970s, she and the family grew worried and moved to Toledo, Ohio. The family continued to experience forms of slavery, they had no childhood or high school friends that knew them, because they moved often and had a lot to hide. During this time, she remained a housekeeper, took care of her family, and stopped selling illicit drugs, but Sally has since passed away. Even though slavery was declared an injustice in 1865, it was still enforced in certain parts of the world. According to what blacks have said, whites felt admiration for themselves, and it appeared slavery itself has always hardened whites' hearts against blacks. Growing up through those times brought calamity for anyone considered a subordinate. Male speculators went from all over the country buying slaves, to later sell them to the highest bidder to pick cotton. Slaves were treated like cattle in most cases children and mothers were sold, and fathers were sold from wives. Women weren't allowed to be superior to men and weren't allowed to advance their authority or social status. Individuality wasn't allowed only doing what was asked of you. Although neither of my real parents worked as slaves, I have experienced some form of slavery. However, this has been a long-standing dispute between blacks and whites. And since it has been confirmed there is one human race, it is time to forgive and reconcile with whites as well as our enemies to move forward. It is believed that people who are possessed with demons, fathers may have abandoned or rejected them, and they probably had a dominating mother. From my experience, it is wise to reveal the names of evil human spirits that later invade to dwell to take back control. I notice they lose control over your life and the spirit world, once you reveal them and their lies. But, you must reveal any deceit and falsehood with grace on your side. Otherwise proven facts can be sabotaged by anyone who doesn't believe in Jesus who strengthens. You need clear understanding, to not convert to their list of demands, and to acknowledge when other demonic spirits start dwelling. This will enable time to reprogram the conscious and subconscious to work to your advantage. While these events aren't something to glorify above God nor his expectations, I am telling my testimony to move forward. The names of my evil spirits were Anthony, Dorither, Eugene, Valerie, and the so-called angelic spirit name was Mary. In the beginning, Valerie and Dorither invaded in spirit, and thereafter, Dorither invited Mary in to dwell. Mary's name is in the Bible, the name Mary means beloved lady or wished for child, she was expected to have an angelic spirit. Valerie's name isn't in the Bible, it is a French name that means brave. 
the Latin clan name Valerius is a masculine name that means boldness, health, or strength. In parts of Europe, it is spelled Valerie, a masculine given name. Dorither's name isn't in the Bible, the name doesn't have an actual meaning because it is derived from the name Dorothy, and in Greek, it means gift of God. Both Eugene and Dorither have different fathers, their fathers had abandoned them, Valerie is their dominating mother, and Anthony was Eugene's neighborhood friend. Valerie had been married both those times without following any purity rules. After Valerie's first two marriages, she stalked my family to ruin our lives. In which, she seduced my father and then forced him to marry her, knowing she was coming into the marriage as a defiled woman, not bathing or getting rid of STDs. It became more about what she wanted, and less about setting goals and allowing God to work through our lives. Her family members had often repeated what they said with exaggeration or loud talk, especially her mother Sally. Sadly, Valerie had already sexually molested her son and daughter, when she molested Anthony and his sister Elizabeth Ann, in front of myself and Dorither. After that, she taught us to commit sexual immorality, and to eat things that were sacrificed unto idols, those idols were alcohol and illicit drugs. After that, she became a prostitute, was emotionally unavailable, violently abusive, and even more defiled. Those actions formed a lack of respect, and then Anthony and Eugene became my molesters. Using seduction, Valerie often forced or invited herself into my family, and made huge demands. While pretending we owed her something and stealing from myself, and several family members. She would put my family members up against one another and tear them apart with her semantics. Such behavior included accusing, backstabbing, betrayal, blackmail, confusion, control, criticizing, deceit, envy, extortion, and false narratives. She had become an endangerment to the kids before family and friends, so much so, family members persuaded my father to get a divorce after only four years of marriage. During which the family wondered why would a person go out of the way to be so wicked. Yet, she tries to explain things with her propaganda without taking ownership, not acknowledging she has ruined lives. It all started when I was two years old, and lasted two decades. My rights and responsibilities were violated when I experienced the abuse, cognitive distortion, dehumanization, deprivation of necessities, isolation, molestation, rejection, and restricted expression in her care. However, Valerie who had become my grooming for sex step-parent is a subconscious negative. It appears the human name meaning of the spirit, reveals what the spirit uses to condemn, and the negative or positive symbol of their zodiac sign reveals the direction the spirit will take. But, since the spirit name meanings and symbols have nothing to do with you directly, everything they do and say may be confusing. There is a discussion about negatives and positive symbols in a later chapter, and it is to balance your intuition for creativity. Mary the so-called angelic spirit, who had been my disingenuine step-aunt, is to a subconscious negative. In the dwelling, she remained quiet, and eventually, she played along in the attacks with the other two demons making the dwelling feel unbearable. Mary and her brother Elmore were the Jezebel and Ahab behind the group. From the beginning, one or the other had always been present to dictate manipulation. Both of them did it to protect their interest and to advance their power over the group, myself, and others. Both Anthony and Eugene have served time in the penitentiary for possession of narcotics, drug trafficking, and theft. Dorither who had been my wicked stepsister is a conscious positive. She was a bedwetter as a child. At the age of 16, Dorither became haughty, so she painted herself as a prostitute because she wanted to rebel against religion. Since then she has embraced some masculine traits. She has become a person who constantly lies and uses seduction to lure others into falsehood. She has done the same things as her grandmother and mother. She often forced or invited herself into my life once I had moved away from their home. Where she made huge demands and repeatedly stole things, and pretended I owed her something. I had been avoiding them since they were known for distorting relations with propaganda. Such behavior included accusing, betrayal, blackmail, confusion, deceit, envy, extortion, false narratives, kidnap, mockery, and even strife. When Dorither turned into an adult she became a foster parent, the children from DHS were groomed for sex, and her husband had molested several kids in her custody. When it was reported that the children had been molested by her husband, she lied, covered up, and falsified documents to rear them as her own. The cover-up included brainwashing tactics such as beating the kids when they brought up or talked about those events. She told them the cover-up story, and convinced them not to talk to neighbors about the events, even if they brought it up. After that, he was arrested and the children remained in her care. During this time, her daughter was molested, and for privacy reasons, I won't reveal the other children's names. Both Valerie and Dorither were taught false discernment during their upbringing, and are incapable of changing because they don't adhere to learning from outsiders about correcting human behavior. Before 2008 Dorither was arrested for drug trafficking, in 2012 she was arrested for disorderly conduct, and after an obstruction of official business arrest, 
she was arrested for reckless child endangerment because there was visible porn on a computer and children were present while visiting her mother's home. Robert Russell was convicted in 2005 and released in 2009, for sexual battery and sexual motivation, and has since registered as a sex offender. He was Dorither's husband at the time. Having said that, these people were non-relational and passive-aggressive, who lacked empathy, and had abandoned many paths in life. The conclusion, both Anthony and Mary kept their eternal mates, and Eugene eventually married. Valerie and Dorither had married several times, but weren't able to keep an eternal mate, as compulsive liars, they tore their husbands down with lies instead of building them up with truths. They were more concerned with other people's possessions such as children, husband, and things rather than the relationships themselves. As a result, no reconciliation took place between myself and the group. The name Veronica doesn't appear in the Bible it means bearer of victory. Her veil was sent up to the temple to Jesus while crying out after carrying his cross to Golgotha. Matthew 27 51, the piece of cloth is now known as the veil of Veronica. Fourth century writers provided a derivation name of Vera icon known as Veronica, the woman who Jesus healed by the touch of his garment. Matthew 9 20-23, although the West identified the woman as Martha. In 2013 I had a near-death experience, also I was experiencing flashbacks from those events, which caused me to want to analyze those past events. During this time, I was also struggling to turn from my evil ways because I was still committing some of those same sins. Which made it difficult to forgive them and let go of the past. Because those people of the past covered up the events while it was going on, and I got blamed for many things I had no control over. I was also struggling with the mythical themes of the gospel the virgin birth and the resurrection, which countless others find difficult to take in. But, in 2019 after reading Barbara Thering's book Jesus the Man, I began to see the fleshly sins for what they were. Most importantly, I received a renewed soul, and also was able to reprogram my mind concerning cognition. If you want to know more about my resurrection, read my book The Unlimited Resurrection on Amazon. Not all Veronicas are made purified and holy, and neither is all Mary's angelic. Afterward, I wrote Jesus' Mission, a book to better understand what he experienced during the Gospel period, there are a lot of relatable similarities. I was surrounded by false discernment, and I wanted to change. In 2020 my life changed for the better and the things I had been planning for years started manifesting. I haven't married, and now I plan to do just that. God has shown me how and what I can take responsibility for and what I can let go of, which frees me of the wrong that was done on their behalf. Another reason I was reliving the past, I wanted to see things for what they were, without being physically around them since they have stood by propaganda. I have suffered many afflictions over time, but today's a new day. God would rather I reveal my story for his glory than to remain in that old trial test story. The Bible teaches women are to seek knowledge to gain a husbandman interest eternally. Wisdom is what helps women keep their eternal mate, and this is how people stay married for 25 years or longer. Men sometimes lack wisdom, and women can help to refresh the mind and vice versa. All too often the human demons, have had their spirits broken by a parent or caretaker. And then those evil spirits tend to lack the wisdom from childhood to adults to do what's morally right by others and self. And most adults are too fearful of the control the evil spirits have on them, that they are reluctant to reveal the source, which hinders overcoming and moving forward. However, God doesn't cast people to hell on earth because of invading spirits, he allows you time to do right by others and self, according to the word. What are horrible reoccurring events? A circumstance or outcome that keeps happening, which can cause dreadful or horrifying shock, it can even be extremely deplorable, disgusting, or unpleasant. Things to apply yourself to, to claim the victory. 1. Value the righteous sinner's clear advice for cares of the heart, over the unrighteous sinner's validation. 2. Become a forgiving person, who takes compassion upon others in times of need while being submissive. 3. Embody a loving and kind spirit daily. 4. Acquire knowledge that will get you further in life. 5. Acknowledge setbacks as obstacles can be overcome. 6. Reverse the demonic spirits dwelling for a departure while preventing them from controlling your moves. 7. Once you value the body's flesh and soul to be pure, free of cancers, diseases, and unhealthy substances is when you can avoid warfare of any kind. 8. Reprogram the mind with proper usage of the cognitive functions, to utilize the sixth sense with true discernment. 9. Forgive without seeking revenge. 10. Acknowledge that weaknesses are caused by fear and self-regrets. Devil and Satan Character References The word devil exists 106 times totally in the Bible. Only four references in the Old Testament the people did not believe in a devil, and back then the devil was referred to as evildoers. More talks of the devil started in the New Testament, with a whopping 102 references. In Matthew 4 1 then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This was the first reference to an evil spirit. 424 is the first reference of people being possessed. 
and his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. In 933 is the first reference of devils being cast out. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. In 934, the Pharisees were the first to refer to the prince of the devils. But the Pharisees said he casteth out devils through the prince of the devils. In 1224 the Pharisees also refer to Beelzebub as the prince of devils. But when the Pharisees heard it they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils but by Beelzebub the prince of the devils. Then in 1228, Jesus said, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. And in 1339 is the first and newest reference of the devil referring to the enemy. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Matthew 25:41 is the first reference to the devil and his angels. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. In the theological sources, Beelzebub is just another name for the devil, similar to Satan. Satan is known in demonology as one of the seven princes of hell aka Lord of Flies. Satan is a malevolent figure in Abrahamic religions who seeks to seduce humans into falsehood and sin. In Christianity and Islam, he is usually seen as a fallen angel, Origen, who used to possess great piety and beauty but rebelled against God out of hubris. God allows Satan temporarily power over the fallen world and grants him a host of demons. A figure known as Satan first appears in the Tanakh as a heavenly prosecutor. A member of the Son of God or subordinate to Yahweh, who prosecutes the nation of Judah in the heavenly court and tests the loyalty of Yahweh's followers by forcing them to suffer. Condemning vs. Judging. It isn't wise to use both judging actions against someone because you have to remain blameless to form a clear understanding. For this reason, many people often have a hard time separating those two meanings, and this is why warfare escalates in their life. When you think this way you keep expecting different results. The thing is judging guilt isn't the same as condemning guilt. To condemn is to voice an adverse or unfavorable judgment about a person's actions that could result in conviction, punishment, or sentence. When it is done by someone, it indicates publicly voicing an opinion of strong disapproval. The adverse or unfavorable opinion could result in anger or persecution. To judge is to voice a critical decision or judgment about a person's action, but the judge first reviews evidence that supports either side before deciding. When done legally it is voiced by an administration of justice. And when it is done by someone, it indicates voicing an opinion to make a mental judgment. While judging is too publicly voicing an opinion that could be selfish, it can result in anger, being bullied, or being provoked. Overall, you must change beliefs to change thoughts of warfare and how you will deal with it. Spiritual Warfare Spirituality consists of the soul, as distinguished from the physical nature. The intellectual mind outlook involves matters of devotion to the church and religion. Warfare is an armed conflict between two massed enemies, competitors, nations, or rivals especially when vicious and unrelenting. Warfare victims may hear demonic voices from the past, accusing, boasting, and mocking of things that led up to the traumatic events, overlooking the significant factors, negotiating topics for self-control, or even selfishness over possessions. Once victims experience demonic attacks some victims may exaggerate or imagine thoughts surrounding certain events or scriptures of the Bible. Thus victims may then downplay thoughts surrounding preaching or teachings of the Bible. These victims may even lack empathy for destruction and violence in the media, and may not even perceive it as so, but as revenge. When experiencing spiritual warfare, a person may feel heavily burdened mentally or physically, fearing adverse conditions that surround the trouble of oppression. After that, the person may appear closed-minded, denying, or ignoring their self-well-being for unrighteousness. What helps form mental stress? Abuse, defilement, dehumanization, demonization, false discernment, long-suffering, sexual abuse, sinful family traditions, warfare, etc. According to a 2013 statistic, a world population of about 7.1 billion, research showed 30% were possessed by, demons, devils, negative energy, etc. 50% were affected by them while 20% were not. Either way, the entire world population was affected by negative energy one way or another. In most cases, people don't acknowledge being possessed until more extreme dramatic events happen. The process of dramatics increases gradually over time, making the person's thoughts and instincts form into a possessing entity. Sure, possession can be mild, moderate, or severe. Of the 80% of the world population, 56% were due to low-level spirits, and 24% were due to high-level spirits. High-level negative energy control low-level spirits negative or positive. Behavior is affected during levels of possessed entities, physically, psychologically, intellectually, and spiritually. 
quite often departed ancestors' negative energy influences or instigate situations on earth. If a person has high levels of spirituality along with sixth sensibility, they can perceive real reasons behind incidents while events unfold. They understand real dangers and empty threats. The researcher says one can only identify an attack by a spirit of the same level of spirituality. And the reason for the increased effects of spirits, demons, devils, negative energy, etc., in the world population, is due to the average spirituality level of people have decreased over time. Church affiliation is decreasing while the atheist revolution and demon possession are increasing. What does possess mean? To be a property, to someone who dominates and influences ideas or feelings through demonization. What does possess to the entity mean? Possess beyond the natural existence of the five senses state, with regards to destruction and violence against others or self. Spirit possession and cognitive neuroscience. The phenomenon of spirit possession is usually considered an altered state of consciousness marked by dissociation. The brain normally shifts between functions and utilizes subpersonas for manipulating and reacting to certain social situations. Such as rebellion, romantic or the life of the party, etc. These subpersonas have different levels of inhibition and response, the person's sense of self-identity does not change. The normally functioning cognitive metaprogram, the ego, attempts to organize interruptions of the stream of consciousness into continuity. Awareness of actions requires attention, and neuroscience has found that in many automatic behaviors, the action is not attended. Especially in stressful situations, the brain acts in advance of the ego's ability to organize its activities, and the person cannot remember what they did to get out of the situation. Ego processing is rather slow compared to routinized behavioral responses and reflexive actions, and in certain situations, the brain is forced to abandon it. And cognitive neuroscience has been determined from the metaphor of examining the brain as a computer. The normal organization of the human brain processing data suggests that dissociation may not be abnormal. While possession is on the rise in the 20th century, the emic system spiritualism, New Age, Scientology, etc., have been developed to better explain its occurrence. But the issue with those neurological methods, they explain possession as an experience for the congenital defective, damaged, or deficient brain. It could be difficult to determine what an otherwise healthy or normal brain consists of with possession steadily rising nowadays. Studies show there is a possible physiological mechanism active during shifts in the state of consciousness, in general, the rapid depletion of calcium ions in the synapse. And this seems to be why the dissociation occurs. Various forms of spiritual possession. The state of consciousness while altered with spirit possession is a growing study of scientific religion. Western Egyptians began acting out the death and resurrection of their god Osiris, which in turn inspired the Greeks, and then Christianity. Acting out characters was merely for the benefit of others. However ancient Westerners believed spirits were responsible for the physical and mental illnesses of people who were possessed. And when people were possessed to the entity, they assumed that their soul had been expelled by some spirit who had taken ownership of their body. Scientists back then acknowledged that possession occurred frequently in women than men. Initially, scientists began diagnosing the condition as hysteria, a loss of self-control that meant the womb had become a dangerous organ that needed to be removed. Women weren't allowed to be superior to men and weren't allowed to advance their authority or social status. The Haitians, on the other hand, do not recognize possession as a form of mental illness and do not use it for performance. But the gods do expect certain things from their devotees. For instance, understanding the importance of what gods are significant to their lineage, what the gods brought to the foundation, and what spheres the various gods are assigned. From childhood they learn that Urzuli is extravagant, Agaun is fierce and Petro deities are bloodthirsty and vengeful. Haitian voduists believe a human is composed of three bodies. The first body is physical, known as the core cadaver, and the other two bodies dwell within the first one. The second and dwelling body, known as the Grobon Ange or, large good angel. The third and dwelling body, known as the T.I. Bone Ange or, small good angel. Both the Grobon Ange and T.I. Bone Ange departs at death. The first after several weeks and the second thereafter. If the T.I. Bone Ange is driven out for any reason, the person becomes a zombie one of the walking dead. They believe that sorcerers can place a person's T.I. Bone Ange in a govi or jar, to make the person a zombie. However, zombies and possession have two different meanings. When the grow bone ange departs and is not replaced, the person is mort one of the truly dead. For possession, a person's T.I. Bone Ange remains, but their grow bone ange is temporarily driven out and replaced by one of the loa or spiritual beings. Loa mount the person like a horse, when it leaves the person's grow bone ange returns to its home. It is believed a person's grow bone ange wanders while they dream, and sleepwalking is of great concern in Haiti. The loa are translated African deities, gods of other origins, deified recent ancestors and heroes of the revolution, or lesser spiritual entities that perform services called work loa. In Haitian cosmology, a person's grow bone ange can become loa once it reaches the abyss, and then that person can return to possess others. When a person is possessed by one of the loa, 
they are referred to by the name of that being. When a hypnotized Haitian sense their god's behavior isn't accurate, this internalized cognitive imprints for the loa, and then a possessed person instinctively becomes Dambala, Urzuli, or Agaun. The gender and other identity properties of the deity are all part of the program, the Agaun sub-program is recognizable throughout the continent. Voodoo devotees recognize which loa are present in their mount because of such things as bearing and posture before they announce their arrival. The Haitians know when a person is merely trying to act out being one of the loa, they have specific tests for the presence of the deity. Usually, involuntary possessions in Haiti are dealt with in either one of the three manners. As a Catholic, the relatives will acknowledge it as a demon and seek a priest to perform the exorcism ceremony. As a person who practices voodoo, it is usually acknowledged as the loa has come at an inappropriate time, in which a haungan is brought to ask the being to leave. As a non-religious, the person is brought to an asylum or treated for suffering from mental illness and then warned against associating with friends who practice voodoo. Trial test and error, I saw my mother and others suffer from demon dwellings but mental facilities or medications never changed their overall circumstance. As I too suffer from demon dwellings, I acknowledge not to overextend the usage of the sixth sense dogmatically or irrationally. And generally, I don't mince words unless I have experienced the outcome. Sure, I failed immensely at what I was supposed to take from the experience with my mother. Although she is my angel in spirit today, I can now change the cycles of abuse and vainness. Prayer for demonic dwellings acknowledgement and thanks, Father God, I acknowledge all things were created for your glory. I acknowledge when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit earth was cursed. And I acknowledge, I have inherited eternal wraths of punishment for my ancestors' past sins of fleshly corruption. I ask forgiveness for past corruption since the curse of the ground begun and my current corruption. Therefore, I give you my cancer and diseases for your glory. Can you allow me to be resurrected to inherit the kingdom of God, as an angel or godly spirit seeking the eternal harvest and fulfilling your will? Also, can you enable my conscious and subconscious to be reprogrammed with true discernment for your glory? Thank you, Father. Smiles bless your heavenly name. Repentance. Fewer people are acknowledging fault for making improper decisions, showing remorse, or confessing sin. This means the average person suffers from fear that surrounds past self-regrets. When you hurt someone, they turn around and hurt others. You can be a wiser person by showing courage and strength. To avoid holding in past regrets pray to God about your struggle. Then simply ask the person's forgiveness for your actions. Afterward, learn what not to do the next time, by acknowledging the reason such things took place. Feeling sorry for something one has done or has failed to do, and then turning from the wrongdoing towards God shows repentance. Showing remorse through repentance helps express the aggression and deep sorrow responsibly because it frees the person it wronged. In Luke 5:32, Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. It is a valid part of your spiritual journey to acknowledge evil or good in others, to be set aside for God's glory. So, you don't have to allow weak thoughts to separate you from God's guidance. Reconciliation. Imagine two people part of a harmony arguing or fighting, and the harmony they once had is strained. They have stopped speaking to one another, communication becomes awkward and then they become strangers. After the miscommunication and estrangement, insults take place and then they become frenemies. The time comes to put the argument and estrangement in the past. You want to declare an agreement of truce to reconcile, and things don't go smoothly. Either the enemy wants you to appeal to their list of demands or they want to fight to see who's toughest. Which can decrease the original interactions of the original harmony, resulting in even less peace. Estrangement can be reversed through reconciliation, to reconcile is to restore the harmony of friendship or relationship. Fewer people are forgiving enemies or able to reconcile differences otherwise, there would be more forgiveness in the world. However, it doesn't mean you lose hope of reconciliation. For the most part, it would help to stop clinging to hope through revenge. It is wise to ask them to a saving grace point for prayer before God. But you don't need to be bitter if they don't comply with the saving grace point, it only means they fear man, not a God. Either way, this is time for God to see that they aren't a forgiving person or just want to remain an enemy. The fruits of the Spirit along with faith and grace are moral characters you can illustrate while dealing with enemies. This is to be able to acknowledge the Spirit of God in action in them and then to forgive. Let go of anger and move on, and be blessed and freed by violence. Saving grace prayer, Father God, there has been deep-seated bitterness between us people. We have come together to put aside our differences. Help us to apply forgiveness of 70 times 7 in our hearts, and to replace the bitterness with kindness. Also, we ask forgiveness of our sins, and peace of mind to judge one another with righteous judgment. Thank you, Father. Spirit of fruitfulness when you are filled with the heavenly spirit their evidence fruits of the spirit are in your life. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such, there is no law. Galatians 5 22-23 What does the Spirit of Faith mean? 
loyalty and truth toward the duties of agreements, commitments, promises, vows, the word, etc. As a believer who put faith in God. Prayer manner, it is spiritual communion with God and an object of worship, that can be used for adoration, confession, supplication, or thanksgiving. This means prayer can be used for inspirational as well as non-inspirational needs. Too often, it takes something bad to happen to be open to receiving a miraculous inspiration. We use prayer to pray for others and ourselves. Having the right spirit to pray, is doing it using true words that have significant meaning. Jesus' example of prayer is in Matthew 6 9-14, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Dictionary Terms Attachment, an act of attaching or state of being attached. Being, the fact of existing, existence. A human being, person. Energy, the capacity for vigorous activity, available power. The ability to act, lead others, effect, etc., forcefully. Entities, something that has a real existence, thing, corporeal entities. Being or existence, especially when considered as distinct, independent, or self-contained. Haunting, remaining in the consciousness, not quickly forgotten. The act of a person or thing that haunts, visitation. Haunting memories or music. Vibrational, an instance of vibratory motion, oscillation, quiver, tremor. Informally, a general emotional feeling one has from another person or a place, situation, etc. Definition. Evil spirit dwelling, immorally and wicked spirits marvel at dwelling themselves in a person, as an attachment. An ESD is more serious than a haunting because after the attachment, the evil spirit that didn't believe siphons the person's energy. High energy spirits, if you do advanced lucid dreaming, astral projecting, or sleep paralysis, you may come across high energy spirits, HES. Low energy spirits, the flip side of the HES are the less.